The challenge begins. KT Giga Internet. ASL Season 4. Final. This is your life. It's the What's up, guys? We are here with another ASL Finals. Taste and Artosis are back from BlizzCon. And Flash is in the finals again, Artosis. This is very <laughs> exciting. I can't say I'm surprised. I do think Hero has a much better shot of taking him on than a lot of these previous finals we've seen. Well, I certainly hope so, Tasis, because Flash, we may as well call him Bash, because that's what he does to his opponents, okay? <laughs> like, it, he's just, he's been so dominating thus far. Hero, though, is in top form. He's on the top of the right. Zerg heap currently. And fingers crossed he's going to be able to give Flash a run for his money tonight. This is a best of five. Flash has been on a killing spree this year. Yeah. If he wins this, it'll be his third ASL victory in a row. Um, and when you, when you get a championship such as the ASL three times in a row, that is yeah. a very, very special thing. It's so hard, nearly impossible to be that consistently Good. Consistently number one. Yeah. But it might happen here tonight. If not, Hero causes the upset of StarCraft 1. Yeah. It's it's kind of a crazy thing, as you say. Tasis, ask me how Flash did this season. How did he do this season? Uh, he lost a game to Bisu when he went bio. Wow. Other than that, 100% domination. I know. He's crazy. Just, it's wild what it's, Flash has accomplished. It's just insane. We're going to be bringing our players out. Um momentarily here. Do tell your friends to join us here at Africa TV. I am very curious to see what kind of techniques Hero is going to come out with. I think Flash doesn't need to do anything fancy. He's probably going to play the super modern TVZ, one that uh, does switch into mech later on. It should be a lot of fun. As you see, uh... <laughs> <laughs>
Flash. I take a breath, I'm not gonna lose. This is what I came here to do. I walk that wire and I take that step. Won't look down, got no regrets. Won't look down, got no Starting this, we're going to go to a quick interview with our two players to see what their thoughts are before starting this best of five. What is epic intro? Oh, I know. I was getting chills watching, guys. Tell your friends they're stupid for not watching this. They have no taste. They have no taste. It's crazy, man. Um, going to these two players. Hello, hero. Welcome. Everybody's been saying that Flash will always be winning every tournament. Is there any chance for you to take Flash on today? Also, hero, you've had experience on, on your side. You had a tough way coming up in this bracket. Also, you've been going into full sets every game. Many crises you faced, um, you had to face during your match against Lara. Do you think you can take this tyrant on? Today, a lot of people came down to support me. And up until today, all I've done is train and practice. I've had no regret for the time I've invested. I hope tonight is going to be a big, strong finish for me. And I've got a lot of belief in myself. So you're ready to take down the tyrant. What do you predict the results will be? I'd say 3-1 to one in my favor. Wow. What a speed. Well, he's challenged a god saying he's going to defeat Flash 3-1. to one. Flash has shown a lot of great confidence in that statement. But I also heard from your father before the show that you poured a lot of uh, yourself, a lot of, you put a lot of preparation into this. What is your answer to Hero? First of all, this season is especially important for me. There's a lot of meaning uh, to it. I've never had three consecutive championships in my heydays. So now it's my chance to do that and make that record. So that's what's going to happen tonight. Well, I'm not sure it would be 3-0, but I actually was thinking the results would most likely be 3-1 in my favor. I also, I'm confident in the way I prepared, and I think if the games go the way I planned, it should be pretty straightforward, and I have a large chance to win. KT Kiga Internet Company in ASL Season 4's winner will be awarded in this tournament today. So tonight we find out who will raise that trophy. And that does it for the interview. Let's get this going. All right. Hero versus Flash. The last ASL of the year.
I think there is no scarier player in the world right now than Hero. This guy has been steadily improving throughout the year. Flash remaining consistently the best. Uh, but, you know, previously we had Shine versus Flash, and I do feel that Hero uh, has much better chances of taking on Flash than Shine did back in Season 2. I definitely agree with you on that. Not a huge uh, surprise that he even made it this far, but can he take out Flash? He says he's confident in himself. I am, I am so excited to see what he's going to bring to the table here tonight. ブルーベルーを受けに来ていきなさい。ブルーベルーを受けに来ていきなさい。ブルーベルーを受けに来ていきなさい。ブルーベルーを受けに来ていきなさい。ブルーベルーを受けに来ていきなさい。ブルーベ
저한테는 무엇보다 진짜 세 번째 우승이라는 그 타이틀을 갖게 된다면 333이라는 거는 제가 봐도 진짜 너무 탐나요. 정호야, AS1 4를 치르면서 이렇게 성장해 왔던 것 결승전에서 한번 시원하게 한번 보여줄 테니까 결승전에서 멋진 게임 했으면 좋겠다. 하면서 우승은 진짜 저는 뺏길 수가 없고 대회 때또 다른 모습 보여드릴게요. 굉장 많이 오고 하고 제가 이상해. 제 선전에서부터 산전 수전 다 겪은 것 같아요. 정말 힘들게 올라왔는데 그만큼 제가 한 단계 성장을 한 시즌인 것 같아요. 최선을 다해서 연습을 할 테니까 우리 팬분들 많이 응원해 주시고 ASL 시즌 4는 제가 주인공이 되겠습니다. 10년도 넘게 응원해 주고 계신 것 같아요. 팬분들은 그러니까 최고의 자리에서 좋은 것만 보여주고 싶다는 생각이 강한데. 진짜 제가 생각해도 그 우승했을 때그 짜릿함은 이길 수 없는 것 같아요. 그래서 이번에도 우승해서 꼭 팬분들과 같이 즐기고 싶어요. 이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이
Whereas if you play against Flash on something like Fighting Spirit, I bet you we see a hero cheese there, man, because otherwise, how does he get that third gas? You have to, you really have to point that out. It's super important because this is how you keep an RTS fresh, is you keep rotating different maps. And as trends pick up, we then uh, hammer together a map that might have different features on it, which forces the meta to constantly shift and evolve. <laughs> By the way, the season four review, look at this. Terran's got halved between the first two rounds. So did Protoss's Zerg crew. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no one, no one can explain that. <laughs> it's totally... All right, we're just going to roll the punches yeah. here. Basically, all the Zerks advance, and we had a seed coming in yeah. from that round of 16 uh, because the top four gets seeded into the round of 16 rather than the round of 24. But anyways, this just kind of shows you what we were talking about before, where yeah. Zerks did very well this season. A lot of them got quite deep. And yeah, considering the small number, that man, the amount that managed to squeeze through consistently is, is very important. Yeah. We yeah. had... Uh, a wide array of different types of Zerg players coming into this. We had um, the super deceptive players uh, pulling off their tricks. We had the macro players who were able to go into the late game. We also had players that were doing super aggressive all-ins yeah. right away, not being sneaky uh, at all, but just controlling very well and pulling through. So again, every ASL finals we've had this year, it's not surprising to see Flasher, but we've had an unusual player uh, that he's up against. Yeah, like C. We were expecting a Jadon. We yeah. were expecting a Bisu. We didn't get that. And that does force us to acknowledge that despite the legendary status of those players, it's a different time. We're here yeah. in the end of 2017, and there are new players coming out and dominating. Well, it, it's, a, it's a crazy time because everyone is super active right now. The pro scene is coming back strong. You know, this season, I thought for sure we'd see either Solki or Bisu in the finals, but Flash eliminated Bisu, uh, Hero eliminated Solki, and here we are, right? These two stand on top of a heap of dead nerds. And it's important to point out because, as you were saying, Solki, somebody who didn't advance, he really was looking like the best Zerg, but his style appeared to not be appropriate uh, in this ASL. Hero was always somebody we were saying, this guy's really good, he's definitely got a shot against anybody. Yeah. And we basically said that in every single match until he finally made it. <laughs> to the very last round of the ASL. So I'm I'm curious to see how he will do here. Now let's also keep in mind this is a big stage. This is definitely something very intimidating yeah. for Hero. Somebody who's been playing StarCraft 1 basically his entire life. Flash, being on a stage like this is so par for the course. This is Dude, yeah. basically part of his life. Is being on big stages and yeah. everybody cheering for him and him saying something like, yeah, I'll probably win this, no problem. I'm feeling good. And then delivering. Yeah, a StarCraft final stage, you know how like you look at the rooms in your house, right? You're like, well, my bedroom, I, I'm there every day and I spend yeah. most of the time there at least eight hours, right? And then the bathroom, like, yeah, I'm there. I, I spend an hour every day in the bathroom or something like that, so sure. on and so forth. If a final StarCraft stage was a room in Flash's house, it would be ranked fourth in how much time he spent there. Little statistic for all you out there. That's how how often he is on we, that final stage. We made stage. these jokes about Flash's family coming down because <laughs> you know a lot of times his family or family members come down and support him in these events. But it's like, okay, how much of your family's time are you going to use up yeah. because you're in all the finals all the Dude. time? This is eventually going to get redundant for them. They got stuff to do. They got their own lives. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, are they? How proud are they going to be really at the end of the day? Yeah. Man? Like, yeah. You want another championship? Are those just a bunch of dummies you're playing against, son? <laughs> like, what's going on there? It's like, no, these are the greatest gamers oh. on Earth. I'm just yeah, even Flash, better. They still might be his crash dummies. I'm not sure yeah. about that. <laughs> or whatever strats he's coming up with. Yeah. Um, There's going to be some hero face paint on the airbag after this one, perhaps, Stasis. <laughs> we'll see about that. Again, guys, map one, super important. Not just because it's a best of five. And we're going to see what the tempo is for these two players. But really, because this is a map that Hero can win on. Yeah. And if he can win on this here, it's also the last map in the series. If he can win here, we know he could win on it again. Yeah. It, by the way, guys, for anyone that's tuning in that does not know the full history of Flash, that 3-3-3 thing coming up, this could be his third ASL Finals. He's won three OSLs, three MSLs. Only Nada has ever done that aside from Flash. And, well, obviously, Nada has no ASLs because Flash wins ball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nada's in a different so place. Just than to his, throw uh, that out there for people. Career. Yeah. Um, Hero going over everything that he's practiced here. Uh, as he said, if the games go the way he planned, he should be fine. But the difficulty with facing off against Flash is there really, truly is no clear weakness. Yeah. 
if it's he hard was an RPG character, too. all of his stats are maxed out. Yeah, uh, and, and no one can play quite like him. Last is about as close as you can get. Yeah. So I'm assuming that Hero must have practiced last quite a bit, and obviously whatever other top Terrans that he could wrangle together for this. If he wins, no doubt those names will be said, and that'll be an exciting moment. To see who can give you the appropriate practice to beat the man who makes this matchup look imbalanced. Also, if Hero shuts Flash down here, that is so insane. Yeah. Because he's about to stop a huge shift in StarCraft 1 history. Well, I guess no matter what, it's going to be a big moment in, in yeah. StarCraft history. But to deny Flash the opportunity to cement forever his dominance once more yeah. in like, the StarCraft world is very impressive. I think we could already call him Bonjoa again. Second time Bonjoa, two Bonjoas in a row. Is he going to get three Bonjoas in a row? I don't know, man. StarCraft has to die and come back again. But, like, if he wins tonight, it's undeniable. He is the Bonjoa once again in StarCraft 1. He is the greatest player, the player that everyone must look at to defeat. And, I mean, this is, this is a huge history-making night for Flash. And can Hero throw a wrench into those gears? Flash, uh, as he enters his booth, he actually always brings a ruler with him to measure the exact distance that the mouse and mouse pad and keyboard are away from each other, the height of the chair compared to the desk. Yes, everything. Uh, I don't know if there are any other players that are doing that, but he's been doing this for, I believe it's been over a decade. Oh, no, he's been, been doing it this. forever, man. Like, right? it's, it's a meme within the StarCraft 1 community, the StarCraft 1 scene, because he does measure everything out. We've never seen other StarCraft players do it. Recently, I saw Tokido do this at an event. Oh, that's Bust right. Bust out his tape Street measure fighter. and do the same exact type of thing. Well, it makes sense. You need it to be as close to whatever, uh, wherever you practice yeah. at home. This is the future, Having the chair at a slightly different height, having the monitor at a different distance from uh, where you're normally looking at it, you want to try to recapture that. Mm -hmm. And um, certainly he's done that here today. Well, this is the beautiful thing about eSports, right? Like, there is always something to improve. There is always something to do better. And at this point for Flash, it's small things like measuring everything, making sure everything is completely optimal for you. Is your booth the right temperature? Is your chair the right height? Is everything yeah. the right distance apart? Because he doesn't want to have to think about a single thing in that game aside from killing some nasty bugs. Once the game starts, yeah, there's no turning around. You just start that algorithm that you built into your mind. Start reacting, start responding, and do not miss a beat. Um, we do have our players join into our game, so we're going to hop into this momentarily. What are your predictions for this, Artosis? I'm, I'm thinking 3-1 think Flash. Yeah, I, I mean, everyone's saying 3-1 tonight. I'm I gonna want 3-2 Hero, by the way. You want my mind says Flash, my heart says Hero. Dude, Hero seemed pretty confident there, so I, maybe Hero can, can peel a couple games off of him. But it's so hard to imagine Flash losing three games. Like, he just... He, has he lost three? He's barely lost three games in two seasons of ASL. Like, yeah, he he was true. on insane winning streaks yeah. going through this. It wasn't like he had really any close series. Yeah, um, which makes it all scarier because Heroes games, or I should say, the series he played as he moved through the bracket were very close. Yeah, it's true. They were nail biters, and he managed to pull through, but. It's a different story on the other side of the bracket where uh, Flash was destroying anybody who stood in his way. Yeah, like Flash looked 100% dominant in every game except the one he lost against Bisu where he went bio against carriers, which isn't 100% gimmick, so don't take it as such. He was not trying to goof on Bisu. That was uh, something that he had practiced at least some and, and had ideas behind. But, like, seriously, other than that, if that's your only game that doesn't look like you are the greatest and way better than your opponent. Yeah. I think you had a pretty 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 cool season, I guess. <laughs> I would say so. Pretty neato, yeah. if you ask me. Um I am so excited. Yeah. Now that StarCraft Remastered is out, some new blood has been injected mm -hmm. into the original eSport, the game that started it all. <laughs> And it's never going to go away. Dude, what Star a great game is. is here. I'm so happy that it's having this resurgence. Oh, I look at like that I feel like he's looking at us. He, was, he looked at me. Sure. He looked at you at home. Did you see that? He looked through you, nerds. Wow. Damn. You know what? I'm changing my, I'm changing my it's bet It's going here. to Hero now. Dude, it's 3-2 for Flash. He just did <laughs> Blue <laughs> Steel. For, he just took another game off Flash with that look, as far as <laughs> I'm concerned. But still okay? lost. But <laughs> still lost in the best of five. Yeah, no, he still loses. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's flash look, you, get it, you get one more win. What for do you sure expect? It's like, you, is he a flying man as well? Is he just going to fly through the sky like Superman on the way home? Possibly. 
Well, if you beat Flash, you can do anything, that's for sure. Well, you only have to win three games. You can, in a series, pull off a win against against anybody if yeah. you just have that right trick. Playing a thousand games back to back, that's tough. But um, just yeah, in these best five of a thousand, games, Flash always. That's wins. what we really want to have: is a best <laughs> of a thousand in Jadong versus Flash. Oh man. Um, no, but you know, when you when you have two players of different skill sets and they keep playing over and over and over, right? 10, 20, 30, yeah, yeah. 40, 50 games. You start to see a larger and larger gap between who wins and who loses. But totally. that's why a best of five is so important. We don't let them play just one game because something crazy could happen and maybe the, the, the better player doesn't win. Yeah. But in a best of five, there's enough planning you could put in there. Yeah. Um, it's time for that, adaptation. That's right. You know, there's time for nerves to get to the weaker player. Fatigue to set in in long absolutely, games. Absolutely, absolutely. And this is why Flash has such a ridiculous win rate. He's just, I mean, he's Flash, guys. No matter what eSport you come from, you bow down to Flash because he's better than all of your well, players. he's essentially the best gamer of all time. Yeah. Currently in the world, in any game, you don't really have anybody who's consistently dominated who gets... What uh, about Faker? Yeah, what about him? Yeah, what? well, I mean, <laughs> sorry, guys, who are fans of, uh, of Faker. This, it does not come close, believe it or not. Flash, uh, the degree of respect he gets from every other top player, the results, the length of time he's consistently been playing, mm -hmm. and he might just do it again Dude. here tonight. Yeah, three OSLs, three MSLs. There's like four people who ever who have won three OSLs, five that have won three MSLs. The only overlap, again, Flash and Nada, both Bone Dros, both the, both the greatest players of their era, both Macro Terrans, in fact. And it, like the fact that this is like ESL season four and we're going on Flash's third victory, are you kidding me? And it's not for lack of talent. We have Bisu active, Jadon active, Stork is active. I mean, efforts and, around. And, and, and don't, don't tell me that the games we've seen look radically different from, you know, 10 years ago. Dude. Th these are the best Brood War games we've seen. The game is getting more and more refined, more and more figured out. And the, the meta develops the further meta and further. Just crazy, man. The meta game continues to advance. Uh, and, uh, I mean, we're in a new era. It, it's it's so cool because with eSports and the Internet connecting everything together, if you want to learn something, if you want to practice, you can just keep grinding over and over and over. You're always going to get linked to a new player. You're always, yeah. anytime, any place, you can find a game. That's true. Um, and the fact that you can have anybody, when the whole world is wired together like this, be that consistent <sighs> in a game with multiplayer, it is unreal you know how many people and that could be in any game how many people are devoting their lives so much of their time to trying to map out and figure out one game in this case starcraft the most beautiful gaming puzzle ever made mm -hmm. um, and the fact that he's managed to do that over different eras of starcraft this game is i, I believe nearly 20 years old this march it's going to be this 20 march, that's right. years old so 20 years um, and Flash has dominated in various eras of that. He's always been consistent. He's always been yeah. respected. And I guess another milestone might be reached here if he wins his best of five. And the way he's performed in the past, that's a very realistic possibility. Finally, it looks like we are ready to go, guys. Crossing field, set one. Spread the word. Flash against Hero is about to begin. Fight. Fight. Okay, we have Hero on the right and Flash on the left in this one-on-one -on -one map. Again, we were very curious to see how exactly Hero is going to open. This is a map that allows Zerg to get uh, a very easy third base. And yeah. on, on many maps, Fighting Spirit being a prime example, the third base is, is much harder to get, and Zerg really can't function and move into a later part of a Zerg versus Terran if they don't have three bases. Yeah, it, it gets very difficult indeed. Oh, whoa, wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, Definitely so, some proxy racks and coming so on. Very surprising to see Flash do this. This is 
really Flash playing around the way we all expect Flash to play, and certainly I think the way that well, uh, Hero expects Flash to play. Here. Dude, I tell you what, you don't go for a, a triple golden crown champion, whatever the hell we're calling this crazy record that'll never be reached again in the history of all esports, but without being able to mix it up in such a way. Yeah. Yes, Hero knows he is the greatest macro player, and his standard straight up game should beat Hero probably, but to, to mix this in, to just be like, you know what? We're doing a proxy 8 racks, bro. I mean, that is that is showing that Flash is absolutely here to win, and you see this amongst the greatest champions ever, right? This guy's not a cheeser. MVP from StarCraft 2 was not a cheeser. He would do the same type of thing in these final scenarios. It's how you win in a series where you only have so many games to play, yeah. right? If this is the best of one, would Flash do this? No, of course not. Um, or at least it'd be very oh unlikely. Okay, and this is God. this is what we were waiting for. We, we wanted to see, was he gonna go for the hatchery at the natural out here. Oh, this or is the what one Flash in the wants. Back. This, is, this is all going according to plan. And this may cost Zero the game, taking the wind out of the sails yeah. for Hero in this series. You expect Hero to take this base first because then you can kind of just defend everything at this frontal location. But this is what Flash is looking for. He peeks and he sees the hatchery. Nothing has seen this SCV. The right. SCV has greater vision range. So right now, Flash, oh, I'm getting chills, man. He knows exactly what's going on. He's in great shape. The pool has up and started. Is he going to go triple hatch? Oh, my God. Oh. OK, this is, this is uh, 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 to some extent, by the fault of Hero here taking a risk, assuming that Flash would never do a strategy like this. Oh my uh, and now God. the bunker started, and Hero is realizing the situation that he's in. Oh, and Hero's in a terrible spot right now. He knows it. He starts his spawning pool. That hatchery at the natural, what, I mean, does he end up canceling it? Does he let well, it finish just to buy some extra larva to I buy think some he, extra time? I think he will cancel it at the very, very last second here. It's because possible. he has no way to actually salvage this situation. Keep in mind, back in Flash's base, he's actually uh, taking his gas here and teching up. He's not going for a quick expand of his own. So he wants to do a one-two punch to knock his opponent out. He doesn't want to cripple him. Uh, he doesn't want to clip, excuse me, cripple um, Hero here and then try to go into a macro game. Uh, he's turning it up. Okay. That, that bunker on the high ground is so important. Whether it finishes or not, it gives vision for these Marines. Look at the dance of drones. He doesn't want to lose these drones at all, obviously, but those Marines, if he can strand them, if he can kill them, he'll end up holding. Okay, the Marines can get behind the minerals, making it basically impossible to keep these drones alive. The sunken oh. colony cannot reach those Marines down there at the bottom. That drone dance really hurting him right now. He gets us sunken up, but the sunken, as you said, it doesn't really it's, reach very it's much. It's actually poorly placed. Oh my God, look at that bunker down at the bottom. Creep not blocking it. Hero having a hard time even mining minerals at this point. Yeah, having a hard time getting his links even around. Having uh -oh, a hard there. time making his drones go anywhere. <laughs> having a hard time everything. So he's going to send the drones down here to the south. He wants to mine from this location. Right now, it's going to be nearly impossible to kill that bunker. An SCV there, the way that's positioned. But what Hero's doing, he's sending his Zerglings across the map. Oh, no, now he's not. Now he's okay, going to send okay. him back here. He was, he was doing that for a second and has decided to go back. I believe a Vulture is headed across the map. Yeah. Eastbound here, there it is. And, one, and that can easily yeah. take out those links. Okay, that one vulture is going to be a big, big problem without circling speed done. Uh, we'll see if he's getting that pretty soon here. Hopefully he'll have that finish up because his vulture can be microed so, so heavily. Of course, with that star port on the way, wouldn't be surprised to see a raid just picking off a bunch of overlords at that point. And I mean, he's just attacking Hero in every single way. This is a nearly impossible situation for Hero to recover by. It would almost take a, a miss micro move here by Flash, and I just don't see yeah. that happening. He is putting in the killing blows here. With these links gone, obviously the sunken colonies being the stationary static defense that they are, the drones cannot be protected. And look at this, a Hydra is dead on the way to try to help deal with this, but he is killing so much. The two vultures going down here. There's nothing to defend these drones, but the drones themselves tries to go after those vultures, but has to run away. And now with the Wraith out, even more damage going to be dealt here to Hero. A few links come out here. He might be able to pin these up against the wall. Looks like actually one of a vultures remains alive. Now, the Hydra that just hatched, we just saw that, is the only thing that can kind of fight uh, 
a Marine walking around, yeah. a uh, Wraith, for instance, coming through, a Vulture on the ground. So that might allow Hero to stabilize, but the sheer momentum yes. that Flash has this game, the total uncomfortable position that Hero has been forced into here by Flash, I think it would take a miracle for Hero to Riku. Yeah, this is crazy as well. Pushing back Overlords into a defensive spot so he can lay mines that contain everything. It's just like everything. He's attacking him in every way. Like hey, tonight, Hero is going to have nightmares that Flash planned as a follow up to make sure he never tries to come back to another finals. And, and again, it's so important to point out that we all expected Flash to go for a macro game because he basically doesn't lose those. But to open up with a build like this, one that is uh, very, very risky on a map that was super important here for Hero. He took that risk and it paid off. It's quite a technical he rush that the he's bluff. done. And, and look, it, the damage has been fantastic. The amount of lost mining time, a few killed drones, a ton of forced units. The last thing you want in the whole world right now is a bunch of slow hydras being made on a one base economy. That's right. Uh, it, it's it's ludicrous. And well, Flash's these... fault as well, the mines plus cloak. Like, you need to get Overlord speed to deal with this. Yeah, the, the problem, uh, really, if you want to look at the big picture here for Hero, is not can he stop this bunker or, or hold up these raids. It's that mass hydras don't really do anything later on. So Flash has forced his opponent into making a bunch of units that don't have any real easy utility later on here. You can do some damage to Terrence with him. But honestly, you, you really wanted it to set up into something later on. Sure, these could be turned into lurkers. Sure, it's going to yeah. be helpful to try to fight wraiths, but Hero can't really leave his base. Flash rapidly teching up. Uh, and really, Hero completely surrounded. There's enough wraiths tucked away at the bottom of the map that if Hero even tries to move out, um, Flash is going to pounce back yeah. there in that bottom right main and start killing workers. Dude, there's three wraiths out right yeah. now. They have Cloak. If he kills a single Overlord that's slow in that back area, then that's not a place you can even mine from for a long time. It's just, it's crazy. Look at this. Very slowly, he's clearing out these spider mines. All those are doing are buying Flash some time while he gets his production underway. Okay. More Hydras are coming up now, hitting that bunker up there. Flash is, now has a science vessel tech up and running. And that's one of the last big pieces you need for Terra. Now, he, yeah. he rushed right there. He doesn't mass up a lot of infantry or anything like that. Um, but instead, he's going to have these vessels out. He should be able to hold off anything that comes in his ramp. Hero finally stretching out onto the map. But that's when these wraiths are going to come in. We only have one Overlord here. Oh, and as Artosis was saying earlier, with Cloak available, there's nothing to keep these drones alive. Yeah, these wraiths are just going to ravage this mineral line right now. Look at this. He cloaks before he comes in. Going to kill that Overlord in a matter of seconds. And now the drones start to fall. He's got to send everything back here to guard these. Okay, when Overlord headed down here to the bottom, but the race, of course, will easily move away, avoiding the vision from the Overlord. And this is just getting worse, really, here for Hero. I feel for him because, to be frank, guys, he's not doing a bad job of staying in this. But it's it's Flash slowly and surely taking out different aspects of anything that Hero had going for him in this series. He's now going to get this Overlord, which means Cloaked Raids can continue to dominate down here at the bottom and take out these workers. Dude, it, I mean, he started off by breaking his knees there with the, the bunker rush at the front natural, and then he, he broke one of his arms when he bunkered behind the minerals. Now all of his fingers are getting... He's like, breaking I, the fingers, dude, he's breaking the toes. It's crazy. Like, a hero is being... Hurt everywhere. Look at the supply right now. 28 to red <laughs> supply here yeah. of 10. He's got one Overlord. He has to spend 300 minerals on replacement Overlords yep. to be able to make another and, unit. And this is the Executioner move here. As he slowed Hero down, stifled him, hiccuped him in every way, the vessel, the Marines uh, aided with the Vultures, will come in here with a very straightforward push that there's really nothing that Hero can do to stop. Hero has been forced into a unit composition to try to hold off vultures and wraiths. These will never take <laughs> off Marines with uh, with stim no. and medics aiding them. Yeah, in, in fact, I think when he sees this hit, he might just have to GG at that point. Look at that, two vessels out. Flash's army is undeniably stronger than what Hero has here. And GG is called Flash just wrecking Hero in game number one. Very nicely done.
Not a shocking result, but the way that he got there, the way that Flash played that, I think Hero was not ready for. And already with Flash having a lead, we said before this series started, this map was the most important map. It was a map Zirkum went on because they're shaping the late game, but Flash avoids late game entirely with that opening. Man, what a crazy game right there. Very yeah. well done. Putting Hero on the back foot, and now crossing field this map where Hero's talking about, you know what, I think I can come up with a good strategy to beat Terran on this map. It shouldn't be too hard. It seems like it should be a good Zerg map. Flash just throws that all out the window, right? He rushes, yeah. he says, it doesn't matter what map this is, I'm abusing you and you're done. And I mean, that just mentality-wise, he takes an advantage on top of the game that he's already won. And a really brutal way to go down. The moment that you see that bunker being made and you know you did take that risk, you try to go three hatcheries before spawning pool, you know you're probably gonna lose. But Hero was a good player, he lasted a long time. Uh, and slowly, Flash bled him out until eventually he had the combo of the Marine Medics, the Science Vessel, to do that killing blow. Morale-wise, Hero's gonna be hurting. We'll be right back. We're gonna go to a short break when we return game number two in the ASL Finals. Hey, Monster, you might wanna check and see if our point's still going out. <笑>あ、僕ちょっと違うけど、今誰？제가 <웃음> <웃음> 어떻게 이겨 그 사람을 마술사잖아. 거의 또 잘할라나? 그럼 내가 꼴찌인가? 고수 중에 고수, 변 고수인 저를 만나게 돼서 랭킹전이 있다고 해요. 본인의 실력이 어느 정도인지 지금 당장 체크하세요. 저보다 안 됐으면 당신은 하수, 나는 고수 후. 아 귀만 안 나오면 내가 이길 수 있는데. 김준호 씨 아시죠? 그분은 제도 제가 많이 배웠습니다. 그렇기 때문에 우승은 나야 나, 나야 나. 차원이 다른 클래스를 느껴보세요. 안녕하세요. 16강에서 아쉽게 단끝 차이로 도망가란 은찬입니다. 저그가 페라는 이길 수 있습니다. 이영호는 못 이기더라고요. 당연히 이룹시가 이영호 선수입니다. 좀 많은 사람들이 이영호 선수를 응원하는데 저는 약간 조일장 선수가 이번에도 뭔가 한번 이변을 일으키지, 일으키지 않을까. 저는 이번 결승에서 영호를 응원. 합니다. 왜냐면 영호가 이번에 우승을 하게 되면은 맛있는 걸 사준다고 했기 때문에 영호를 응원하고 영호가 워낙에 세서 과연 이영호를 잡을 수 있을 것인가 이영호 선수가 무난하게 우승하지 않을까 생각합니다 이번 만큼은 조일장 선수에게 한번 목을 다쳐지 않나 생각 들어요 이렇게 마음이 가는 거는 일장이한테 많이 가네요 영호가 저는 우승하다고 생각하긴 하는데 
일정이가 또 경험이 많거든요. 준비를 되게 잘한다고 느꼈어요. 누가 이기던지 3대 2로 재밌는 경기 보여줬으면 좋겠어요. 이제. 많은 준비해가지고 좋은 모습 보여줬으면 좋겠고요. 다음 시즌에는 또 재미난 컨셉을 들고 어, 또 ASL에서 보여드릴 테니까 앞으로 ASL도 많이 많이 사랑해 주셨으면 좋겠습니다. 일단 파이팅! 이영호 파이팅! We're back here at the ASL Finals. Uh, we're going to go to a quick interview and see what the supporters uh, of these two players are going to be th uh, thinking about these two players coming up here. But first, a quick online and offline event for you. That's right. Uh, we're giving away stuff. As you can see, there's going to be a jacket. Stuff a headset, is pretty cool. Keyboard. It looks like a mouse pad, or maybe that's even a mouse mat. One of those yeah. long ones you use on your whole desk. Or maybe it's a little uh, thing you put under your cereal bowl to eat at it. Uh, you could definitely do yeah, that as well. You could well. definitely do that as you well. You could wear it as a cape when for all I care, man. I that's mean, right. It's, it's, it's a cool piece of merch. Yeah. So I hope you're here or at home watching and enter these contests that's and win right. stuff. You gotta participate. If you don't participate, you can't win. If you don't ask, the answer is always no. Wow. Well, we just saw a very, very one-sided series. I'm curious to see. Um, oh, oh, great. We're gonna get some pros the up man here. man toss himself. There he is. It's reach. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Going to our interview now. It's been a long time. Good to see you. Uh, yeah, Anything you want to say to the fans here? Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, glad to see you guys. I know it's been a long time. Anyways, I'm here to support Flash. I hope he's going to win. And I hope if he does win, he takes me out to a nice dinner. Is that the only reason why you support Flash? No, it's not the only reason. I've been friends with Flash for a long, long time. I've been watching him uh, in his training. He seems to be in great condition. His play style's been bold. I think all the experience that he's built up is really paying off here tonight. You can really see it. What do you think about map number two? Oh, I actually think the second map is pretty difficult for Terran. So, there's a lot of things Flash has to be cautious about. If Flash can win on game two, I think it should be 3 0. She said, So you're sure it could be a 3 0? He said, Yes. He said, Yes. High chance it's going to end 3 0. So, if Flash wins. Can you promise us something? No, I can't promise anything. All I'm saying is I want Flash to win. And also that he could bring us out to a nice expensive dinner. He says, no, you have to make a promise as well. We're getting into weird territory here, our toast with this interview. I've got nothing to offer, he says. He says Flash has enough money from streaming. He can he could deliver anything. Anyways, uh, so if Flash wins, then I will I will buy him a very nice coffee. Or toast is I'm thinking he's talking an eight dollar coffee. <laughs> She's ribbing him for, for that to be the special gift for, for Flash. He says, look, that's a special treat. I don't go out that much. Anyways, Flash, good luck. And over here we have Sharp. Say some words to your fans. Hello. I'm Sharp. I'm glad to see everybody here at the final venue. 
So you're here to support Hero. But he lost map one. Of course, we still have four more possible maps. What kind of advice would you give to him? To Hero? Since Flash has so much experience in the final stage, I don't think he really feels any anxiety. So I think Hero shouldn't be worried about losing game number one. He should think boldly, just focus on game number two. I just want him to show what he prepped for. I think if he can do that, he can actually show some awesome results. It's tough though, Flash is almost perfect. It's hard to find any errors in his play. But look, Flash is still a human. Even if he can play a near perfect game, humans aren't perfect. It might be hard to find his mistakes, but I'm sure they're out there, and I'm sure Hero can find it. What's, what is your promise if Hero wins? I don't have any promises. <laughs> okay, that's very clear. I think Hero needs some strong support. Any words to him? Yes. Hero, this is such a big stage. You're the last Zerg. You're the last hope. All the Zergs are cheering for you and hoping for you. I hope you can pull out some awesome games. Let's get, let's make some noise for Hero. And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> All right, Artosis, if Flash wins this, what will you promise to do? Since everybody's apparently supposed to have a promise ready. Yeah, uh, there's there are definitely some cultural gaps in between <laughs> where you and I are from and where it's yes. right. Korea. Season four. Uh, anyways, we're going to game number two. The pressure's on for Hero. A very disappointing uh, loss there. It's not just that he didn't win, it's the way that he lost that. Yeah. Flash out prepped him. Flash knew, or basically called him. He said, I know you're going to be greedy. Uh uh uh. Yeah. I might be Flash, but I still know how to proxy a barracks and end the game right away. Shame on you, you scumbag Zerg. You make that pool right away. <laughs> By the way, guys, it's super packed in here. We keep getting this camera shot of all the chairs, but like we have a bunch of bleachers that are really packed as well. It's yeah. like a ton of people came out today. Everyone very excited to see if Flash can pull off this this crazy triple golden crown thing. Triple, triple. Uh, I, I, I don't even know what we're supposed to call this. The, the Flash Award, I guess. Uh, or, of course, if Hero can somehow fight back. I'm hoping he can we, take we Gold We might have Rush, to change so. the name of this tournament to the AF. Bell, the Afrika Flash League, where we just watch Flash kind of as a one-man show come through and smash all these nerds. Dude, and you, then, uh, yeah, you know, you can't spell ASL Finals without Flash, man. That's true. Wow, you can't. Well, actually, there's no H, but, but the there's H a lot silent. of those letters. A lot of those letters. A lot there. of the letters. There's a lot of those letters that are in Flash. It's got to mean something, In fact, guys. even finals is almost an anagram of Flash. Yeah. If that N, you like move that middle thing down, right? And like yeah. make it an H and then get rid of the I. <laughs> we got Flash there. Yeah. You know what I mean? I see it. It's You're totally so right. easy. It's so easy. And if you take the map Gold Rush and remove almost all the letters in that map and then replace them with some of the letters from Flash's name, you get Flash there as well. Look, it ends with SH. Like, yeah. Flash also ends yeah. with SH. There you go. Uh, it's time, guys. Game number two is loading up on the map Gold Rush. Let's do this. Boy, Flash versus God, Hero. All right, it's on. Uh, we have Hero in the center left, and we have Flash in the top center. All right. This is the map we call Skull Desert. Yes. Will this be in the next season of ASL? I don't know. Yeah. But do take note of the terrifying skull in the middle of the map. Is it screaming? Is it laughing? Is it yawning? We don't know. Well, that matters the course of this game, Tasteless. That's true. Right now, it's screaming a little bit because that Overlord's going in the wrong direction, and Hero needs every last bit of help he can get. 
yeah, there is uh, that tiny bit of, I guess you could call it RNG, where you got to pick one location to scout first. Yeah. It's a three-player map. If you don't get that, uh, it's not the end of the world, but you certainly don't get to get any immediate intel right away. Um, we have another SCB coming out. Not the same story as game one, though. No. Setting up a wall in here. Yeah. Uh, there is even a slight possibility that we will see a command center first. He can make a tight wall uh, at this location. So we'll see what he goes with. You know, th that's the thing. When you set the pace in game number one with a rush, and that's like kind of a, a thing that we see quite often actually in finals matches is a player will rush in game one, right? And it kind of like resets all expectations. Like, oh my God, is he going to rush me every game? Like, am I am I ever safe? It, is he going to do some crazy greedy macro build? You know, it's, you can really throw a player off. This map, uh, it, it's quite unique in the sense that it can become an island map in some ways. It can become a map with a back door uh, into the main, depending on how you treat uh, these structures in the very corners of the map, whether you decide uh, to kill the eggs or kill the neutral uh, assimilators that allow either access around the edge of the map in a big circle, or it closes things off and clogs it up. I don't know how much of a factor that will be in this series, necessarily. Yeah, it's, CVTs it's can get very straightforward on this map, unlike a TVP, for instance, where you're almost guaranteed to have a, a kind of odd game, yeah. off-color game on a map like this. Yeah, you're quite right about that. But uh, definitely a map where Zerg can get three gases without too much problem. You know, once you defend that frontal area, you can just kind of, you know, send a drone around the back where Marines can't just freely walk to. Killing the That's eggs right. takes long enough that you're not going to see uh, a, a giant, like, five racks army necessarily just attacking eggs for the amount of time they need to to kill it to get in and get the expand. Oh, my God. Is he going to get this SCV? Oh. This is not something that would normally happen to Flash. And nor will it today, Tasteless. Yeah, the drone has to turn around. Very rarely in pro games do you end up with one worker actually killing another one right away. No. Um, and even though it might seem like it's just a hype moment, wow, he actually pulled off a great move early on. Workers in StarCraft 1 are, are incredibly important yeah. because you only start out with four of them. Uh, it takes yeah. a while to build up that momentum. Yeah. It, so losing yeah. one of them actually can completely offset the way a build looks. It, it definitely, definitely can. Uh, can be quite annoying indeed. But look at this. Flash is going one base tech at the moment. Has that factory building already. This is a build uh, that's been around, at least the, 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 uh, the bones of it that we see here. It can be risky. Zerks can come in here and punish you if you do this. You notice there is a wall in on the low ground. Yeah. There's not a high number of Marines because you're teching up to a factory and a starport. In fact, the barracks in this case, um, you have to remember that units spawn out of the bottom left side of a building. Yes. So Marines are going to spawn out of the bottom left side of the barracks, so they're outside the wall. And so there is certainly some risk involved in what Flash is doing this time around. Yeah, it's a very good point. And like just the fact that he has walled like this somewhat points towards tech anyways. If you're going to be making Marines nonstop out of there, you got to be careful because you got to lift your racks Very to get true. it back inside. So, but it's, uh, it's also important to note that telegraphs the tech itself to absolutely. the Zerg if you see that. Yeah. Uh, now, with this Vulture coming out, it's not really going to do too much, most likely. There's already a sunken colony up, uh, which isn't too surprising to see either. If you know that Vultures are coming, a sunken is a great counter to that. All the micro in the world isn't going to do anything against a sunken colony. Vultures now uh, moving out here. And the Vulture uh, in this build is a lot of times used as a contain mechanism. Um, since, Zer since Zerg can usually only get a few Zerglings early on, uh, they're going to be getting close to getting Hydras in a moment here. But uh, this means that nothing can leave the base. Uh, it, so it's I, I think traditionally we think of Vultures as these harass units, or we think of them for their minds. In this specific uh, situation, it is literally just a box Zerg in and give Terran a sense of control. Yeah, and, and you know what? There's a certain build that Flash does uh, pretty regularly on his stream, which is Wraith Vulture to open, where yeah. he'll end up getting mines, and the Wraiths will kill off a couple Overlords and just make it so that, like, to actually attack Flash takes a long time. And generally, he'll go into, uh, if you do have Hydras like this, he'll go into Siege mode and, and deal with it in that way. So, you know what? I think actually Hero has a timing coming up he here. He might indeed. He got, he got the speed. Um, he's burst out. As we said before, the, the barracks is an undesirable location just based on 
uh, for defensive purposes, it's not optimal. Uh, that's up no Ooh. fault to Flash. That's the spawn location on the map. But if these Hydras get up here yeah. and deny this bunker. He needs that bunker and he needs the Marines inside. Oh, pulling down ah. his SCVs now. Looks like he gets at least one Marine inside I there. Believe Might it's be a, two. Is it two? It's one yeah. or two. I'm not sure. Uh, it's a low amount. Yeah. That much is clear. But look, the Wraith could come in here, though, and start to hit these Overlords. Had he denied that. Um, Bunker from getting up these yeah. uh, these hiders would be doing so much more damage. Now this is showing that Hero really prepped for this because this is a build that Flash uses uh, relatively often, and he hit here before mines were out, before cloak was done. Flash didn't have enough time to get siege mode or anything like this. So great moves by Hero, already kind of putting Flash on the back foot a bit. The question is though, the tech that he chose. Can he bring this into a, a good position for him later on? The race are still taking out Overlords. We do see Hero expanding over here to the upper left. That may be a, a point of tension uh, if this game moves on further. And really, from here, uh, Flash begins to tech up. Uh, it, it, it's interesting because it's not at all the same strategy in game one, but the same tech comp yeah. from game one it, it is uh, kind of blossoming out here. Sure. We're now going to get that infantry over here. Comboed with a very early science vessel. This is a very technical way to play the game. Mm. Also a very unforgiving way to play the game oh, from yeah. Flash because if you make a few mistakes and lose any of these super brittle er, uh, units yes. that you started out with, you pretty much lose. It's so execution based. He's got cloak, sure. Uh, but these Wraiths, for instance, if he loses any of these, the Mutas can come over and kill all his SCBs when they're done. That's right. You know, he needs to keep them alive. He's picked off a few Overlords to slow him down. Uh, you know, he. The initial Hydras did force a little bit of damage, so I feel like, oh, the <laughs> Scourge almost hitting right there. It they seemed like they were right bit, though. Yeah, he actually was yeah. not expecting Race to be there. And at the last second, Flash managed to cloak that. So, unfortunate moment there for Hero. Not not the, the biggest deal in the world, but it's just another thing that's not really going Hero's way. But Hero in this game is actually powering up into a really, really nice position. Um, yeah, he's getting those extra hatcheries up. You have to keep in mind, even though Flash has a lot of tech over here, he certainly does not um, have a big bulky army that he can really yeah. push with. Yeah, his army is actually super brittle right now. He That's has right. some very important units. He has good position and everything. A few good upgrades like Cloak, but his academy is just finishing up. He has barely any ground army. Like. He's living right now based off the fact that if you attack with Mutas, this is going to happen to them. Instead, the Scourge fly in. Okay, well, he cleans up two sets of Scourge right there. He cleaned up one earlier. So maybe Hero being just slightly wasteful overall with that, but uh, Flash doesn't have an opportunity to do too much right now. Yeah, uh, the powering is going to be occurring a little bit later on here for Flash. We see two more barracks about to finish up. Uh, as was said earlier, the upper left may be the, the tension point here on yes. the map is Hero, I think pretty boldly, actually expanded towards the Terran, which is uh, not wrong, but it's certainly not orthodox It is EVT. But I think he may feel comfortable trying to abuse this position, possibly even utilizing drops or attacks on the front of the base later on here to try to pin Flash inside. Well, this is really exciting because Hero is trying to get uh, his eggs killed so he can get up there, but Flash, he is having siege mode uh, research and he's going up to a good four or five tanks right now so he should be able to just bash through this ground-based army but will for instance hero get up here and kill these extractors in time you can close this off you kill the assimilators and flash can't get through there with this ground-based army and now with those tanks in siege mode that's no longer doable well he's hero gonna set a drone that. he sees this right away uh, and he knows what's coming. Oh, boy. The push will come through. These links just now about to take out this egg. Is Flash going to pounce, though? Dude. He's still staying back. He's still set up in siege mode. Okay. It looks like now is his moment to move out. And this is going to be tough for Hero to hold. It's a it's a pretty um, almost claustrophobic area yeah. up here. It's hard for Zerg to have a really healthy angle to try to engage. This is sort of the Terran's dream. And this is why we don't see Zergs try to expand towards their opponents. Dude, this group of bio, two vessels, four tanks to siege mode. Flash should be able to kill this base. A couple of radiates coming down on lurkers. Hero charging forward right now, but does he actually have enough? The tanks are very staggered out here. So even if he takes out that one back there, there are still so many uh, behind that can give cover to these Marines. 
Flash looks like he might edge in a little bit uh, closer here. He is going to be in range of the hatchery, which means eventually Hero will have to have some kind of response. One science vessel is taken out, but a remaining science vessel will still allow Burrowed Lurkers to be spotted. Very small victory right there. Just having the vessel, having the vision here is going to be so strong. Some Scourge coming in. He's trying to pick that off right now. He gets a vessel, a big move, but a scan comes down as well. Okay. Uh, he's oh. coming in. Can you actually do this? Oh. The scan goes down. A few Marines here to reinforce. The two remaining tanks will be taken out. Uh, oh, no, they won't. No, they won't. Oh, my God. More Lings, though, are coming up right now. A group of Marines have come in. The Medics continuing to heal them. Some great micro here by Flash. The Sea Jinx dealing huge amounts of damage, and Flash breaks through again. Hero was barely hanging on, but with these reinforcements coming out of the main, it doesn't seem like it's going to last for much longer. Again, Zerg have to have a third race to be functional against the Terran, and that third base may be taken out right here, right now. Yeah, he hasn't expanded anywhere else. He loses his hatchery. So many units have been spent as well. A bunch of links coming in. He might be able to clean this up, but does it even matter? I don't think so. Even if he had a good oh, engage man. there and he didn't quite, the push moves on, and the economy here for uh, for Hero is not good. And of course, this area is open. He can get over to the high ground, get up there, and start hitting the layer. Oh boy, this is not looking good for Hero right now. As if he hadn't taken enough damage already. His Spore doing some work on the race, but with that one sea shake on the high ground, that is going to discontinue his mining. And sitting here, you know, just making Zerglings and a couple Lurkers doesn't feel like a path to victory for me. It does not, Artosis. The remaining defense have been taken out. It looks like Hero is, in fact, going to lose this. And with all of his tech taken out right over there, that's the reset button, really. I think there's no way that Hero can actually recover from this game. No, Flash hitting such a sharp timing here with those four Siege tanks. Killing off the eggs, getting through, pushing into that base. Hero almost held it a couple times, but just can't make enough units to stay alive. That's going to be it. GG! Flash takes game number two, and it does appear, Artosis, that history is repeating itself. He just needs one more win. Well... Uh, this is, it's, it's looking pretty flash favored, baseless, I have to say. Both victories so far, he, he opens up different ways. One with a bunker rush, uh, the second one with a macro opening, you know, into this kind of tech filled out bush. And Hero expanding towards flash, being completely punished this game. He almost held, though, that one attack up. You know, it's, it's unfortunate. I know that Hero is feeling the heat right now. You have to appreciate that not only is Flash doing very, very well and coming on top, but these wins are actually somewhat elementary, Artosis. We're here with the two top two StarCraft players in the world, and Flash, the way he's dismantling this, is all around the basic rules that we understand StarCraft yeah. to operate on. It's very different than seeing a Flash versus Bisu or a Flash versus Jadon. Well, Flash is simply playing by the rules. He's seeing the weaknesses in what Hero's doing, whether it's in the game itself or how Hero planned beforehand, and he's closing out. Hero has to win three games in a row against the greatest StarCraft One player of all time. That's the hardest thing you could ever ask. Reverse oh, all kills a reverse almost all don't kill exist. Yeah. It's, it's a crazy thing. If someone won the first two games, they are so favored going forward. Our next map, though, going to be Gladiator. Flash definitely was talking about how this is a tough map for uh -huh. him. Yeah, how he, he, he does. He didn't feel like he was practiced that well on this map. So maybe Hero has something special for us. We'll have to find out because if he doesn't, this is going to be over almost before it even started. Yeah, we're not even getting the late game. We're not even getting the late yeah. game in these CBTs. You're, you're right. He technically had a hive, but not a single hive unit right. to be seen. <laughs> Having the hive alone is not enough. And uh, honestly, man, the, the fact that Hero can't even get to where he wants a ZBT to be is a scary thing. Does Hero want to do a crazy all-in? He's already down. Maybe Tate's going to risk a payoff. Or maybe he sees Gladiator as the map where he can finally get to that late-game comp and pull through. I don't know, guys. We're going to find out after this short commercial break.
10분을 걸었는데 9분을 정해. 그래서 제가 넷마블의 고객 센터에 전화를 해서 서은경 씨와 통화를 했어요. 그만 좀 전화하래요. 한 번씩 그 팀장급들은 그 CS 센터에서 일일 체험을 하게 합니다. 얼마나 힘들게 일하는지를 니랑 다 적어봐라. 딱부터 여기 나와. 야, 이 개. 야! 내가 지금 8 0 0만 원을 썼는데! 97만이면 이거 무조건 잡죠. 무조건 잡죠. 어, 어, 저는 이거 50만 때 하루에 30마리씩 잡고 다녀요. 아, 아! 가디언. 근데 가디언은 이제. 시스는 아, 밑에 독을 뿌려요. 음. 트레저 헌터기 때문에 못 잡는다. 갑자기요? 어. 지금 잡을 수 있다고 다 투표를 했는데 갑자기. 트레저 헌터. 밑장 쿠페 얘기하냐? <웃음> 아, 이거 써야 되나? 아닙니다. 갑니다. 마크 안 썼어요? 안 씁니다. 26 여기서 한 번만 올리고 한 번만 더 올리고 한 번만 더 올리고 아 만약에 여기서 제가 맥스를 찍지 못한다면 은저 강남 사거리에서 비팔별 해야 됩니다. 미니시야! 면도날이 있습니다. 일중날, 이중날, 많은 날, 날카로운 날. 온통 면도날 뿐이군요. 오, 이건 면도날이 아니군요. 이건 쉴드입니다. 유날밴드가 아래에 하나, 위에 또 하나. 질렛, 퓨전 프로쉴드. 면도날이 지나가기 전과 후 작용하는 이중면도 보호막으로 질렛 최적의 부드러운 면도. 질렛 프로쉴드. 남자를 위한 최상의 선택. 아프리카 TV에는 당신이 아는 것보다 다양한 인정이 살고 있죠. 말 많은 인정, 발 빠른 인정, 잘 먹는 인정, 영리한 인정, 친절한 인정까지. 모든 게 컨텐츠가 되고 누구나 주인공이 되는 세상. 알고 보면 멋진 세상. Are you free? 아프리카 TV. 기가 인터넷 ASL 시즌 4 파이널 We're back here at the ASL finals. It's happening again, Artosis. I think I'm supposed to say something profound like time is a flat circle and then you guys are going to have to go google it and figure it out. But no. It just keeps happening. Flash keeps winning ASLs. He hasn't won this one yet. But boy does it look like he's uh, going to do that. in just a little bit. He's dominating Hero. I, we haven't seen any Defilers yet. That's way too hard to get to against Flash. Yeah, yeah. That I is mean, just... if you get to the Defiler, you've already won against most Terrans. Yeah, you should be just enemy safe. Okay, good job. But uh, you can consume one Zergling, then you win a best of five. Dude. Not by actually using it to beat him, but just because nobody gets that far. If um, you can get that far against Flash, you can beat most everybody. So. Pretty much. Um, this is a map, though, coming up here that Flash said he was sort of uncomfortable on. Now, does that really matter? Because map four is Fighting Spirit, which is the map that if you're not comfortable on, you probably have not played enough StarCraft Remastered yeah. or StarCraft One. You should be able to recreate that one on the, the map editor yourself. Uh, <laughs> but look, that trophy, pretty badass, the one and only God Flash. 
They probably printed that two seasons ago, knowing that this moment was coming very quickly. Yeah, we probably got a discount if we bought a bunch of trophies for Flash at once. <laughs> we probably have a big warehouse somewhere in Korea yeah, just uh, keeping Flash trophies. We get 50% off if we get, uh, you know, we well, order we just, about 100 of them. We rented the, the warehouse next to the warehouse where he keeps the trophies after we give them to him. That's right. But seriously, man, he is one game away from winning that badass golden trophy. His third yeah. as such. Ooh. I am really hoping that Hero can pull something together at this point. Gladiator going to have to be the best game of Hero's life now. I know. it's. Uh, I don't know what... Actually, I almost feel like Hero needs to do something really crazy. Yeah. And not try to Pick play Protoss. a game. <laughs> at the last second, he changes his race at the last second like the worst thing you can do in a custom game. Yeah, but the thing is, Flash has practiced bio against Protoss at this point, too, so I don't know if he'd even notice. This is true. <laughs> man. Oh, man. Hero not looking happy. He knows that he is just another nerd in the grinder that is the finals against That's Flash. That's right. He's another sacrificial lamb. It, it must be so rough. Man, King Emperor himself. Yeah. Hero, you should have picked a different game, man. You'd be a champion by now. But here yeah. you are going up against the man who just doesn't lose. It's so crazy that Flash is exhibiting more domination than even his most dominant previous forms. Yeah. It's this is like the, the finest silly Dragon, Dragon Ball Z yeah. thing where it's like we thought we thought StarCraft 1 was dead, but no, Flash came back and is at twice the battle power before. Didn't just bring it back to life, but made it immortal. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I don't know yeah. what else to say other than good luck, Hero. He has to win this game and two more. He has to reverse all kill. The greatest gamer of all time. If he does not, Flash once again reaffirms why. He's the guy we all look up to. Yeah. He's the guy, I don't know if anybody's ever gonna achieve as much dominance as him in gaming ever. Well, hopefully in the next hundred years or so, we have another person who can remotely be anywhere near Flash. Let's see. This is going to be on the map, Gladiator. Again, Hero has to win three in a row Fight. in this ASL Finals of Flash. Fight. 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 In a cloud of fight, we stand. Fight. We start war. Are you ready to fight? All right, we have Hero in the bottom right and Flash in the bottom left. It is important to note that, uh, again, Hero's Overlord happens to be going uh, in the wrong direction. Well. That beer had very strong forearms. Did you notice that? <laughs> to point I, out, yeah. I didn't notice that, actually. That bear had very nice forearms. He probably uses one of those little squeezy things to build that up. Oh, no doubt. What are those called? Those those little clamp things you can you people always have them by their computer. You squeeze them, they build up. Forearm yeah, muscle. yeah. Is there I'm a word for those? I'm sure that there is a word. Well, I'm, yeah, I guess it's. I'm sure there's a word in the English language yeah. to identify what. It's what, you know what's crazy. Do I know that in word? In the English language, we don't have a word for that. It's just you know. Yeah. There's no concept. It's so for weird what that, that is. It's, it's sold at stores and people own them. We don't and know. We still haven't come up with a word. Yeah. Very tough when they try to put it inside the fitness center, you know, yeah. the sales area. Oh, you know that thing, you squeeze it. They're the like, yeah, yeah, thing. yeah, squeeze it. Yeah. How do you put in the order for that? It's tough. At your sports warehouse. Yeah, I'd like to order, you know those squeezy, squeezy things? They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What should I write on the form? Oh, geez, you know what? Squeezy fisty things or something like that? Something like that's probably going to be fine. Okay, Tosis, he's going hatch first. Okay. It's going to be Which fine. is, of course, very. Very normal. Yeah. And it, it'll be fine because this is just an in-base barracks from Flash. Nothing too weird going on. Based on uh, what we see from him, it looks like it should just be a barracks and a command center from Flash. So uh, that would be a completely normal macro-oriented opening. Of course, doesn't have to stay uh, within that realm. We'll see how he goes. But no gas taken yet, so it really is looking that way. He's scouting the wrong direction as well, so tit for tat as far as bad scouting goes. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, we got the hatchery on the way still. We're still waiting for that spawning pool. Well, uh, <laughs> he's, the SUV and drone just going past each other. Uh, nothing, nothing too crazy going on at the moment. I do hope we get a late game, um, a late game scenario here by uh, by Hero. I want to see Defilers, a Dark Swarm coming down, Plagues coming down. Zergs figured out very early on that since pretty much everything Terran has is going to be these range attacks, Marines, tanks, uh, everything of the sort, you need to have Defilers. You need to have Dark Swarm yeah, yeah. because you can shut a Terran down. Um, and then, of course, Terrans later on, much, much later on, realize once that Dark Swarm comes up, then you might as well transition into mech, yeah. start really abusing splash damage. And, and Flash um, is truly the best player at that as well. And it's also funny because Flash is also the best player um, at stopping a Zerk before the Defiler play yes. comes up. So it's kind of insane how good he is at this matchup specifically. Dude, he's, he's like a steel trap, you know? It's, it's crazy. It, you know, when you word it like that specifically, he kills Zergs more early than everyone, but also is the best at playing mech against Zerg in the late game. And that transition to it, he's the best at that. So, like, he never dies mid-transition, for instance. It, so it's like this, I don't know. It, it flashes Terran against Zerg is like the vacuum of space. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you can only last for like 11 seconds, and then just your and eyes then your explode. Eyes explode. <laughs> That's, that's basically what it is. <laughs> if you really wanted a metaphor, that was the one. That's about as close that's, uh, as we can get, yeah. guys. There's only so many times we can say the same epic things over and over because Flash wins every tournament. That's right. So we have to get a little bit creative at this point. Okay, the links are coming up. Um, but with the Marines on the high ground there, he drives back those Zerglings. Nicely done. Yeah, just poking a little bit right there. So the scouting is done for Flash. Oh, a lot of Zerglings being made. As soon as you get that scout SCV out of there, then, you know, you can do something like this where you make a ton. But an SCV coming through. He sees those links. That is a huge moment. Okay, spotting that is just super important. You can see already the positioning that Flash has set up. He should be in good, in good shape. But Hero actually turning around decides he wants to try to take this SCV out. Um, big hiccup there. The layer continues on here. The Hydralis Den is about halfway done, but you can see with the way the barrack, uh, sorry, sorry, not barracks, the bunker and the depot with the CC there. Yeah. There's no way that melee units are really going to get in there and do any damage. You can try to snipe an SCV, but it's not hard for Flash to pull that yeah. down to the bottom mineral patch. And look, just based on what we've seen here, there's an advantage for Flash. Uh, if the Terran can scout that you're making this many lings and can simply add the bunker, add the depot, and play defensively, these could have been drones. It's not like Flash was yeah. going to walk across the map right now to kill you. You didn't need these units. So just looking at it, Flash, he's doing well, but he doesn't know that there is already a, a Hydralis den on the way. He doesn't know whether it's going to be Muter or a Lurker at the moment. Yeah, he's still in the dark here. Um, there is a possibility Flash tries to push out. He does need to be cautious of the fact that Hero may try to run around once yeah. over. Oh, about to see that right here. Uh, Hero can can toy with the idea of trying to run around and go into the main and kill SCVs. Now look at that. The SCVs get pulled immediately. Every time these come in, these links come in, he grabs the SCVs, sends them to his main mineral, so they walk there super quick. He can block his ramp. In the meantime, this, this group of bio kind of dancing back and forth, a couple sunkens have been built, so he's not going to be able to just break these bases too easily. So the links, uh, they want to be in this behind position. In case Flash pulls the trigger, the links will come in here to try to assist. Oh, forces a stim out there, only losing a single link, so that's pretty good. Nicely positioned Overlord. Looks like he's avoiding the vision here from Marines. Oh, a fire oh. back getting caught. Not bad, not bad, yeah. actually. All right. Seeing Hero pull something together with these links at the moment. Very good control here by Flash, by the way. Yeah. Lots of stims, though, around that area. He's going up his tech tree pretty quickly, which is exactly what you want against this type of lurker play. The five rack's not as useful against it. Ling's coming back in, checking if they can get a counterattack, but plenty of bio here to push him back. Doesn't lose anything, so nice moves by Hero once again. Yeah, Flash with uh, airtight defense. We have scans being sprinkled around. Try to spot the tech uh, pattern and rate here from uh, Hero. It is important yeah. to note that Queen's Nest is coming. Artosis yes. 
Yes. Could we see Defilers, finally? We, we will see Defilers. I, yes, we will. The fact that Flash is still just on two barracks shows us that he cannot kill Hero. Uh, like, if you go up to four or five barracks, sometimes you can bust through a random place that doesn't have enough lurkers and, and pick up a quick victory, like get him on his back foot, but he should not even be able to hurt Hero anytime soon here. Some lurkers darting through, running past these Marines, but there is a risk that Flash may be able to sandwich this. Two more lurkers moving out. He may try to start uh, abusing hold position lurkers. That lurker actually bumping into those legs. He needs to be careful about that. Oh. Here we go. Now, Flash <laughs> is taking a risk by moving out of the map yeah. before a science vessel can uh, escort the Marines and medics around. Well, he's standing guard right now. He's just kind of zoning everything out. I like this move by Flash, right, where he's not moving too much out. He's kind of like, okay, I know there aren't lurkers right exactly here, but if he walks any further, hits those uh, hold position lurker spines, then he can lose a big chunk of his army for nothing. Okay, he's stimming and moving out now. Again, if he falls to the trap, this would be a big victory for Hero. He's, oh my god, he just knew. Great if targeting. this was Battle.net, I'd pause it and call my opponent a hacker, but <laughs> it's Flash. He yeah. just knew that's probably most likely where you'd hide hold position lurkers. I can't, well, I can't believe. <laughs> if, if this was Battle.net tasteless, he would unpause and set it to extra high latency. <laughs> I can't believe he just did that. Yeah. Well, Hero perfectly targeted those lurker spines. Unbroed ran away, so he even got a few kills there. Now, Flash looking to push, but that hive tech is pretty far along for Hero, so I'm not too afraid for him. But this is where it gets scary. Can Flash get a drop off at the same time? Oh my god. Well, he's. Wait pulled, a minute. He's pulled enough mutalisks back here. Yeah. This is really neat that he's switching into Mutas this late instead of going to those Defilers. This is not an overwhelming amount of Marines, uh, but still it's enough that this is a scary hard thing to hold off. A lot of times Flash is scary when he gets his drop ships out here, but in this case he's not going to drop the main. He's actually going to try to power push through here. The Mutas are coming up. There's not enough sunken colonies. We don't see enough workers here either. Oh, man. Well, the Lurker's going to hold the bio back for yeah, the I, moment. I, excuse me, I did not see those four <laughs> Lurkers down there right as I said it. He's trying uh, to pick if up. If he can get this tank, that's going to be huge because the push ability is going to sink dramatically, and he does. You can't break through Sunkins and Lurkers with bio alone. Was this all worthwhile with those Mutas? He made quite a few to be able to kill off two Siege Shanks. He hasn't done much else with them, uh, but this does buy him some extra time. Now, Flash... He's late on his science vessels. Right now he's upgrading a Radiate. Right now he's getting his first vessel. And those are going to be so crucial here. He tried to come in here and sandwich this, but Flash manages to escape anyways. Reinforcements have now come in. The vessel paired up here means the lurkers have to be controlled very carefully. Uh, you either have to keep uh, leapfrogging them away from Ooh. the push, or you need to set up a really, really um, good surround. And if it doesn't work, Terran will win the game. Tasteless, I love what we're seeing out of Hero. He's actually going up into Guardian Tech, that Greater Spire. With these Mutas, he can get a lot done. There's not that many vessels. The vessels came late. So he can't just irradiate all of them to death if he gets five, six Guardians. But he has to get those up first. The push is getting very close. Oh! Great irradiate there on the Mutas! <laughs> Right on the bottom, Muta right there. Super hard to split off. Luckily, I had low health and died very quickly. But he needs to buy some more time. He has a Defiler oh. out now. Eats an Overlord. Oh, perfect save there at the last second. He gets a Dark Swarm up, which means this push has to end. Whoa, getting chills right now. Hero fighting against Flash here, tooth and nail. The Vessel's trying to hunt these Mutas, but the Greater Spire is done. Another oh, big irradiate no. here. Every Muta is so precious as the follow-up play is to try to get those Mutas out here uh, into that Guardian tech. Muta's now headed northbound to try to take out any reinforcements, but again, the Stim bruising those Mutas even further. Flash absolutely everywhere at once. The Muta's having a hard time finding anywhere to turn into Guardians to get that counter damage down onto Flash. Looks like he's flying around the map, seeing if he can find somewhere. But well, you know what? He has his Nidus up. He has Defilers. So it's hard. You know, you're spreading your Radiates very thin as Flash here. He's going to hide these uh, soon-to-be Guardians in the top left. However, 
They're going to be over a fairly open area. The Guardian number is low. Oh, I love this hit and oh. CC back here in the upper left. He makes it behind the Minerals. Yes. You, by the way, can mine from behind the Minerals. It's, it's Absolutely. It's totally fine. And there's a chance they just don't see it. But good scout here by Hero. Dude, I love that Flash is busting out every trick in the book. But Hero is on top of it all as well. With these Guardians morphing, he's going to need to pull his vessels back. But, of course, that opens up room for Hero to move around a bit more with his Defilers to get some more bases up. Okay. There is the option to push here. Zerg's going to move into the middle of the map as the Guardians are coming forward. But the Guardians don't have a good area to try to hide. Yeah. They're, they're sort of in the open. They can be killed off by Marines if you have that overwhelming amount. Now, the Vessel's coming up. Two Fantastica Radiates, so those Guardians are going to die. The other two trying to run right now, but Flash chasing them down. Oh, Nicely done. He has a Devourer, too. And we see the <laughs> spider mine play as Terran switches into a better, uh, more appropriate tech tree to cope with Lurker mm. Defiler. It'll be really cool to see. Okay, there you go. The factory's already in position. The barracks already floating out. He has started the mech switch. This is basically the most complicated thing to do in the game currently, but Flash is the master of it, switching his tech completely. He's been using bio all game, but suddenly there's mech units all over the map, and he is controlling this area beautifully. We don't see a fourth base up for Hero. That's right. Um, and as Terran controls the map with the spider mines, Terran will also continue to grow. Just because Zerg's surviving does not mean Zerg's going to be able to get into a good position. Mm. You have to be able to regain the map, the movement uh, for the Terran, because as Terran switches into mech, expanding everywhere gets a little bit trickier. It's not the same as you'd see in StarCraft 2. You can fork out with vultures and kind yeah. of turtle with tanks a lot, but it's, it's, it's tricky for sure. Ling's ultras. Moving out on the map, dropping, is probably going to be the sure. late-game strategy here for Hero. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways that you can end up playing it, but the thing is, Hero needs more bases, and he needs them basically right now. Look at this move by Good Flash shot. Out. Good shot getting the drone. Yeah, it, by killing those drones, it just slows down these bases even more. We see Flash on three bases, and he's taking an additional one right now. He's getting ahead economically here against Hero. Yeah, this could snowball. Great plague there on the science vessels. It's funny because traditionally it was thought that it's impossible to try to go bio and then switch into, for instance, something like mass vultures, but it's been mapped out so perfectly here um, by Flash. It really burdens the Zerg so heavily to try to hang on in moments like this. And it, it's at the point where Flash may just end up overwhelming the Zerg regardless. Well, his bio, like he's still getting yeah. things done with the bio, and that's what's really frustrating here for Hero because exactly. Flash is not even making more bio. This is stuff that's left over. This is stuff that by now he's okay losing. But, oh, I love this move by Hero. He's loading up a bunch of overlords, and, I mean, there's already turrets in place, but this still could do some serious well, damage. Well, the fact of the matter is that most of the army, if not all the army for Flash, is in the middle of the map, so dropping in the production area could flip the game. But, it, oh, once again, Flash oh, free scans. So many turrets here as well. Very hard to actually even drop. Siege tanks already sieged up. Yeah. Here we go. Some lurkers popping out first. Quite a few. A bunch of links getting on top of these siege tanks as well. The Dark Swarm comes down. Great Dark Swarm here. He just needs to get rid of that last tank. Flash has to address this as all the production is coming out of this location. And this may vacuum a lot of Flash's army uh, back out of the middle of the map into a defensive posture, which will allow Hero to try to start start to assert his dominance here on the map, but it's a long shot still here for Hero. It is indeed. Flash playing a great game, but he's getting supply cap now. He's losing some depots and whatnot. Uh, quite a few links wasted right there. Uh, hopefully we can see Hero get his new bases up. He has a new expansion down at about 6 o'clock or so. He's trying to expand towards that top right, but if he can't secure more bases very soon, Flash will overwhelm him. Getting the armory here, that's another big way to get a lead later on since the mech upgrades are going to be a, a lot more slowed down. Um, he does have this base here at the bottom. He is going to go for another drop. If he can keep Terran occupied down here in the bottom, that's one way he can hang on. But Flash seems to be responding very well to this. All He's spreading his siege tanks out so well that there's really no way to, where to drop without things dying the moment they leave the Overlord. Some great Dark Swarms do come down and get some links on top of these siege tanks. Uh, but really, other than the Dark Swarm, not too much will be done here. 
A few links coming up here Ooh. to get these SCVs. This is nice. Yeah, we yeah. don't see any units here. Those two links can kill that entire mineral line. Hero has an additional base up, but he's so busy with his drops with his harassment, hasn't sent any drones over. I, I gotta say, Artosis, Hero's actually doing what he had to do. Yeah. And if you look at the gas that's been banked up here by Hero, he can start making a ton of ultralists, and this game could actually seesaw into a victory for him. That is a possibility. It's, it's a real uphill battle for him, but he's doing all the right plays. Uh, we are seeing a lot of fantastic moves now. This drop, can he get something else done? How many units are left here? Looks like three siege shanks, a few vultures coming down as well. Dark swarms being thrown up, that lurker gets under. Will he get the other one burrowed? It looks like he should. Oh, I am loving these moves. And oh a huge God. set of lanes up here at the north. If you could just keep dark swarming uh, and flooding that main area while attacking this expansion, there's no reason that actually Hero couldn't win this game here as well. Oh, the burrow of this lurker gonna help a lot. A scan goes down, he gets some good spines off. More links headed up towards this area. Oh my god, almost no units here at Flash's third base. The production again still slowed down. Flash has to use the remaining units that are not in his main to try to hold up all these multi-pronged attacks. SCD's now being evacuated. These vultures will be able to easily clean up uh, the rest of this attack. Meanwhile, Hero continuing to grow. This upper right location, I believe, not scouted yet by Flash. You know, their supplies have been remaining about 50 apart this entire time. So it's really interesting to see that continue to be the case, but Hero is getting more bases up. Look at this. He's starting to get some drones over here. His economy is going to be picking up, but can he keep that pressure on Flash? Can he keep Flash on the back foot with this mech switch? I think this next attack may be one of the more important ones. Um, we still don't see a ton of Ultras comboed in with this army, but the gas for Hero is getting close to three, 3K here. Um, the, the streamlining of links. I don't know. I don't think Flash can hold on, Artosis. No, it's this not looking like This is getting thin out way too much. Dude, the, it's Phoenix with no Marines in that upper left uh, location. Yeah. It's pretty rough at this point. He doesn't even have any barracks landed. He has to hold his mech, but he lost his armory, so his mech upgrades aren't even good. He's forcing a lift off. Is Hero going to do it? Is he going to be able to take a game here against Flash? You can see Flash's supply has plummeted dramatically now. It's 110 to 99. Uh, so they're basically even. That's a 50 supply plummet here for Flash as SCVs are being evacuated. It looks like Hero oh. is beginning to do the impossible. He really is fighting tooth and nail against Flash. This is Flash's best strategy. A bunch of bile going into mech, but he is unable to hold on right now. The links are everywhere. Flash losing SCVs left and right. Artosis for the first time Hero now actually ahead in supply. He's continuing to flood all these locations. I actually don't think Flash can hang on. No, He's gonna I don't lose think he the other GG! Oh, Hero man. wins his first game of the series. It's now 2-1. Flash still in the lead, but Hero just has to win two more times, and he will cause the biggest upset in 2017 StarCraft 1. Oh man, that certainly would be the case. Flash like Insta exits his booth there. After that loss, I think he's got to go and kind of refresh his head. Dude, that is what Flash is good at, man. He keeps the pressure on with his bio. He transitions into mech he's smoother than anyone else. And Hero just fought on and on and on. Had some creative plays in there. The late mutas to pick off the Siege Shanks. The Guardian pressure to allow movement of his defilers. I mean, what a great play by Hero here on Gladiator. In a game where Hero was half the size of Flash. Hero hung on, did a very calculated drop right in the center base where all the production was during that transition for Flash. Flash attempting, scrambling actually, to try to get control of his main. He was unable to then stop the flooding of different attacks for the expansions he managed to acquire around the map. He fell apart, Hero did it, and that Artosis was in a late game CBT. That's right. Where Flash is supposed to be at his strongest. Okay, but let's be real here. The next map is Fighting Spirit. Ooh, yeah. The ultimate map for Flash and his style. It's to the... keep that barracks pressure on, to deny that third base. It's a hard map for a Zerg to go head to head against this god of Terradon. Will Hero try to go for more late game? Will he try to mix it up, do an all in? He's, he's again, he's getting closer and closer. I think any blows to his psychology from the first two games have been erased. Yes. In game three, you win a game like that, 
you know you can do anything. I, I agree with you here, Tasteless, and I love the strategy that he used on Gladiator here, right? He tried to do the link flood, didn't work. Okay, get into the lurker tech. Don't let Flash bully you with Bio when you're going Mutas. You know, it, try to secure that third base as quickly as possible. Can he do it again on Fighting Spirit, though? I think he can, Artosis. By the way, he never went for that Ultra Tech. It seemed like he knew he had to just stick with the Lings. He had that small window of timing. He pulled through. He did it. Um, we want to watch and see, can he get a third base on the map Fighting Spirit? I think that's the biggest question. It is. That's that's what it's going to come down to, because I think if he can, and he can stabilize, he can certainly be Flash here in Game 4. We're going to a break. When we come back, we continue on with the ASL Finals, Hero versus Flash. <웃음> 아, 아! 시스는 밑에 독을 뿌려요. 트레이저 헌터기 때문에 못 잡는다. 갑자기요? 오. 지금 잡을 수 있다고 다 투표를 했는데 갑자기 트레이저 밑장국 빼기 하냐? 아, 이걸 써야 되나? 아닙니다. 갑니다. 마크 안 썼어요? 안 씁니다. 26! 여기서 한 번만 더 올리고 한 번만 더 올리고 한 번만 더 올리고 만약에 여기서 제가 맥스를 찍지 못한다면 은저 강남 사거리 가서 대팔별 해야 됩니다. 미니시야! 저랑 지금 포커 치자고요 지금 나랑? 제가 한 게임 포커 신이었습니다 모르나? 제가 고수라는 게 벌써 이제 한 게임까지 소문이 났나요? 거의 제아의 고수라고 할까? 숨겨진 고수 거의 이 정도야 제 친구들이 되게 많이 하거든요 아, 뭐그 실력 어디 가겠습니까? 예, 탁자인데 내가 <웃음> 나랑 무슨 배짱으로 저를 이길 수 있다고 생각하시는 거예요? 저를? 온라인으로 하는 거잖아요 그죠? 음. 그럼, 그럼 좀 그럼 좀 어려우려나? 어떻게 이겨 그 사람을? 마술사잖아. 우리도 잘하려나? 그럼 내가 꼴찌인가? 
고수 중에 고수 변고수인 저를 만나게 돼서 랭킹전이 있다고 해요 본인의 실력이 어느 정도인지 지금 당장 체크하세요 저보다 안 됐으면 당신은 하수 나는 고수 후 아귀만 안 나오면 내가 이길 수 있는데 김준호 씨 아시죠? 그분한테도 제가 많이 배웠습니다 그렇기 때문에 우승은 나야 나 나야 나 차원이 다른 클래스를 느껴보세요 아프리카 TV에는 당신이 아는 것보다 다양한 인정이 살고 있죠. 말 많은 인정, 발 빠른 인정, 잘 먹는 인정, 영리한 인정, 친절한 인정까지. 모든 게 컨텐츠가 되고 누구나 주인공이 되는 세상. 알고 보면 멋진 세상. Are you free? 아프리카 TV. It was a weird map for one, yeah. but it was also one where he denied the third base. It seems like a hero could get into late game. He could. There, there's nothing the Flash can necessarily do to guarantee a closer. Yeah. It, it, look, it, looking at this series so far, you can tell how much Hero prepared. Game one, yeah. he just got swept away by Rush. Okay, forgive him that. Game two, he had a timing down for Flash's build. He forced a bunker. The bunker barely got up in time, right? So that was solid. He, he didn't end up winning, but. There were close fights in there. Game three, he wins against the, the trademark mech switch from Flash. Hero really prepared for this finals. I mean, yes, obviously it's a finals that's going to do that, but like he's actually showing he knows how to beat Flash. And now we're going into the map, which while it might be the best map for TVZ, it's the most predictable map for Hero to prepare for. That's right. This is a map that has been played basically more than any other StarCraft map that's out there. Um, Fighting Spirit is a map if you were somebody who was learning Brood War, you pretty much grew up on. You, you, you trained on all the time. Um, the one problem with this map is that it's tricky for Zerg to get a third base, and the nature of this matchup is Zerg need a third base, specifically a third gas, yeah. to have the engine to take on a Terran. And nobody in the world is better than Flash at denying a third base. So Hero needs to come in here with a very clear, frankly, perfect plan. Yes. If he's going to survive in a late game. And I think if he survives in a late game, he can have he a can very similar result. Man. Absolutely. He can make a game that looked like that last game in game three. I, I think that you have not, like, you, you've simplified it perfectly. If he can secure that third gas without taking damage, this, it, like, that is the road that he needs to take. He could become an ASL champion tonight. Let's also not forget Flash has shown he's willing to take risks to the zone. Yeah, a player we always identify as approaching uh, with a degree of orthodoxy. Mix it up in game one, he very well could do it again. Let's go now into game number four. Hero versus Flash in the ASL Finals. Fight. Fight. Stand, fight, heaven shall burn. In our cloud of oh, fight, we stand. Fight, we start war. Are you ready to fight? Yeah! You 
Oh, interesting. We got cross spots here. Okay. Okay, so Flash in the upper right, Hero in the bottom left. Now, uh, just going off that, I think the most important theme for this map specifically is the third base for Zerk. Now, yep. this uh, is a little bit uncomfortable, I'd say, for Hero because some Zerks like to take the other main. Yeah. Uh, this is a four-player map, or four-starting location map, I should say. Um, a lot of Zerks will take another main, but that's close to Flash. That is true. If that you, is true. If you take uh, either of the, I guess you could say, more common third base locations, um, I don't they're, know. They're, you know, you know that, 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 it's not. A lot of times, Zerg want to expand away from the yes, Terran. Yes. And if you're in opposite locations on the map, no matter what, you're sort of expanding towards the Terran, even though you're still at a pretty good distance. Yeah, I, I totally see what you're saying here and agree. Now, to be fair, uh, when you do take your third, Terran won't necessarily know where that is. If you've controlled the SCVs on the map with your Zerglings it, correctly, they don't get a free scout. And Flash specifically is known for getting the absolute latest comsats possible. That's right. Uh, he he will skip comstat for an extra SCV every time. Every time, man. Like So there is this little chance that you can kind of get the third up and he goes towards the wrong base or something like that because you can't just send out two groups, for instance. There's also there's other things you can do, right? Like he can he can go for fast lurker and take it in that way. But I mean that that can be a tough way to play as well, just playing straight off a, a lurker macro opening. You know, I, I do like what you were saying about if they're in cross spots, it doesn't become clear any longer where the Zerg really wants to expand. It's hard for the Zerg in that sense, but it means that the Terran has to really rely on instinct. And as you were saying, if he if he goes for Comstat late, which means he can't get free scouting yeah. uh, for some time now, uh, Flash will really have to fall back on those instincts. Uh, and any kind of unpredictable play here from Hero could throw Flash off. It's quite true. So we'll we'll see how it goes. I mean, it, there's always the the possibility something completely different happens, right? I would imagine sure. Flash will play this straight up because it's the best map for that, and that's what he's best at. Uh, but he always could go into tech type play, you know, get things like those rates out early on. Uh, but right now, it looks like he is just going for a barracks expansion. Shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. The scouting uh, in the second spot that he's going to see what Hero is up to. And I mean, Hero is just opening very normally anyways. Regular macro opening here. Should be going for his third hatch right about oh, now. Denies uh, building the extractor. It's a bit annoying. Yeah, it certainly is. That means the drone usually has to come down here and make a uh, extractor on the expansion. In case you're wondering, is this, is this really worth it? Unless you're Flash. Basically an ASL player, yeah. never ever try this at home because you're probably going to end up getting behind if you don't calculate it correctly. Yeah. yeah. What, it, what it forces uh, the Zerg to do is then transfer more workers down to the natural, to the second base. And that's just a little bit of lost mining time. Yeah. It, and like the In other words, don't try this at home, kids. I, very, very true. And this is part of the reason why watching top-level professional StarCraft 1 is so beautiful because all of us have played this game. Yeah. All of us know how mechanically challenging and difficult it is to even build that, then not miss your SCV, then cancel it before Lings kill it without, you know, your SCV dying to those said Lings, right? I, it's hard. And yeah. to watch these guys just make these tiny little changes against each other, this seamless play on the mechanically most challenging game ever made, I mean, it, it's a beautiful thing. It really is. Ling's now coming out. They're going to chase down uh, this SCB. Flash is going for really the tried uh, and true Terran vs. Zerk build. Uh, this is a build that says, I want to go into mid game and late game. Yeah. I'm not trying to do anything crazy here or risky. I want to be safe. I want to get a lot of resources. And I want to have uh, an army with a lot of muscle yeah. later on. Uh, he'll probably go into five racks play from here. I think so. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's just kind of like what is so good on this map. You get so many Marines, so many medics that you can just bully down a butylist based player. Uh, now, he's trying to scout with this SCV. Very nice to get this out here. We talked a little bit earlier about controlling the SCVs on the map. It's a very important concept because when Flash just randomly has extra scouts out, it, it's it's hard to sneak anything by, like where you're going to expand, for instance. That's very true. Um, so let's talk about the, and I think you're totally right, by the way, with the five barracks play. Um, 
if you go for that, what you're really trying to go for is to have total control in mid game. Yes. You're saying that, especially if you have really good control of your army, it's so hard for the Zerg to deal with. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get overwhelmed and you can get surrounded, or you can surround them, excuse me. And keep in mind, this map is very open in the middle, so that's scary for the Zerg. Zerg, a lot of times, especially when they get lurkers, they want to fight in valleys and narrow areas, uh, and that's something very abusable. Now, what we see Hero try to do, hold position lurkers, I think it's very viable. By the way, there it is, that fifth barracks coming down now. And yeah, not surprised to see that. Now, the commsats are coming up. This is like the last possible second. He can scout a spire uh, and, and have his turrets up in time. That's what this is for. Now, there are three places that he can scan, and you can do half scans and see, like, multiple techs. Ooh. Okay, now that did that see... They did not I see the spire. I think it barely did not see the spire. No. He, he does not see that. And here's the third base location. So this is what we were waiting for. Now, no, the third base is actually a lot closer to Terran than the main is, which is why this feels dicey. But it's also not clear. Where's that scan? We have no idea. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we want... Unsure we were, about that. We're unsure if he scanned the drone that was in the upper left. We're kind of we're gonna have to watch but basically and see where the Terran army is gonna move from here. Yeah. Now, it, look, he's made a couple of hydras, so he's definitely going lurker tech right away. But I right. think he's gonna go into mutas as well. Like just sunken so. at the front, two lurkers to hold that third base area in the top left. Now, Flash is stimming down here. He wants to get here before the Sunkins are done. Hero's been playing greedily. He does not have these ready quite oh, yet. Oh, yeah, actually, this might have been missed time. Uh-oh. He might have been a few seconds off. Uh-oh. Oh, drones popping out as well. The worst possible thing that could happen. Muta's coming up. The drones being pulled. Oh, my God. He barely holds this. That was so close. And actually, in some sense, Flash then overextends here. And Hero actually holds his position. Okay, he lost at least one Mutalisk here. Uh, he did have to pull drones as well, so some damage being dealt. Flash gonna chase these down. This By is way, buying time for him to get a couple turrets at home as well. There's one scout over here uh, in the main. Note that Hero has not actually made the expansion he's setting up to do it. Hero's gonna try to intercept the small groups of units in the middle of the map in the hopes that then Terran won't have an army robust enough Ooh. to do anything to that third base. But this is getting pretty tough. There's the Lurker Egg. He wants to block that ramp. But Flash is not messing around. He's heading all the way up here to this location. This is it. Flash assaulting the third base position. Hero has to hold this on up here. It's so important. He's, his, Whoa. Everything was so much later to get these lurkers out. He has a single lurker. Okay, it burrows on the high ground, but one lurker will not hold this many Marines. Okay, he needs to get that lurker back. He does. Oh! And he holds. He holds. Because Beautiful hold. that ramp acts like a funnel, so the army can't move up there, and everything dies uh, trying to climb up to the hill. So very nicely done. And we see, <laughs> did you notice, by the way, huh. he didn't actually start the third base until he won that? Yes. He was being so well, cautious. Also, let's not forget, I mean, he's lost a lot of mutas this game already. True. A lot of mutas have fallen down. Flash has been fantastic at targeting them, keeping the pressure on. And look at this, he retains map control. Even with all these Lings and Mutas out there, Flash is fine. He's continuing up his tech tree right now. He's having his turrets before the Mutas even have a chance to get back. Again, don't try this at home, what Flash is doing here. If you if you let off on the throttle of pressure for one second, those Mutas will be in your base and kill all your SCVs. Yeah, it's, it's very true. Uh, if you don't do this perfectly, it will completely fall apart. Uh, Hero? Now in the middle of the map, what he's trying to do is he's saying Flash, well, he's, his mindset is that Flash may try to push out too much. He may have too much of like a parade-like movement of his army coming out here. And if he can come in here with this bulky amount of Lings and Mutas, he might be able to take this out. But Flash has actually been breaking his army up, moving out in big chunks. And there's been no way here for uh, Hero to shut this down. Now, this is a bold <laughs> move by Flash. Flash is actually yeah. going to try to shove the square shape through the circle hole. And he uh, might and be able he, to. He might, if you he have might be able to brute force this. <laughs> if the square has sharp enough corners. <laughs> you can break through the circle hole. Yes. It uh, is a truth. That is a lot of 1-0 Marines. I he, mean, the mutas kind of have to stay nearby. The two lurkers alone can absolutely be broken by this force. Three lurkers, uh-uh. Okay. You lose all those okay. Marines. Hold up. Hero's going to try to milk out any uh, stims. He's scanning. Hero is using... Okay, in some that, ways, the bare minimum. The scan we just heard, I bet you was looking for Hive. I think that's what Flash is probably on top of right now. He's adding some vultures in. We're starting to see Flash get ready for a mech transition. He's not okay. there quite yet, but when you see those vultures start popping, that means that Flash is absolutely thinking about it. By the way, 
nothing mining at the third base yet. Heroes invested so much. And yeah. needs Hold up, here uh -oh. we go! A huge stem up right now. Some oh, lack of targeting there, and suddenly the lurkers fall. That is a lot of bio to deal with. And this is right as he's transitioning, too. Now, look, he holds the position on the high ground, reversing uh, the burden now where the Zerk can't really get up the ramp because that area is so small. He's coming in with a flank as well. The rest of his bio coming up. This sandwich on the Mutas will guarantee a kill on this top left base. Yeah, Hero just barely does not have enough. He's going to try to go for the Vessel, but I think that's almost oh. inconsequential. And, in fact, even the Vessel lives. And this really means that the third base should go down. He's trying to hold, but this might be his last outpost. Oh, oh that irradiate, just fantastic. The amount of bio here is so much. The Mutas just have to get out of here. And that means that the third base will go down. Two base against two base, never a good sign for Zerg. Yeah, and you can see Hero trying to come up here. He knows he can't let that structure fall. He has a decent amount of Zerglings, but Flash has already, as we just now see, destroyed that. Hero putting, drew, putting Hero's economy in shambles. Hero drew a line in the sand right there at that third base and was unable to hold it, which puts him significantly behind here. But he's trying to pick off this army before the rest of the army can come up and join it. A great move by Flash, though, once again sandwiching all these Zerg units. Oh, my God, all the mute is going to fall. A single lurker trying to get out of here. Yeah, that one lurker on the run here. Um, we have the hive tech up, but... It can't be supported financially here yeah. for a Hero. Hero is now, I think, going to do the only thing he really can do, try to go to that other corner of the map <laughs> and start all over. The thing uh, is, Flash has control of the map right yeah. now. He doesn't have a third base yet, no, but he's making it. He's making his tech transition as well towards those mech units, and having this much control with your bio still on the map, it's such a dire place right now for Hero. How does he end up winning this? Well, now, if you notice, Flash has the Zerg contained, and then he's sending a second army. It's pretty intimidating. Over here to the bottom right. So Hero actually cancels that. He's going to try to hide the drone. Maybe okay. he can use that later. And now Hero is going to try to expand a third time to the center left, which should, okay. in a lot of ways, be the easiest location yeah. to take from here. You're right. He'll be able to hold that one. Uh, you know, Well, I mean, if he goes and attacks and loses all his units, then everything's over, basically. But... He'll be able to hold that one. The thing is, it's not near another base. Taking the fourth base becomes what taking the third base was. Almost impossible. Flash will have complete map control. There's only two exits he even has to watch. The bridge going out of his natural and the ramp going down out of the third that Hero is taking. So Flash is now moving. One smaller army at the north, one larger one in more of the center. He may push in. He may just go and try to surround him and then begin to grow. We see the factories are coming up here. He's going to try to transition out of uh, these biological units. He doesn't want to use Marines anymore. He wants to go to another phase of the game here. Scourge coming in. The vessels are already pulled away. He's bringing up a lot of bio right now. He does irradiate one of those lurkers. They are stacked, so there's a... Oh, there's actually three there. I didn't even notice. Uh, definitely a dangerous thing that Hero is trying to set up as a trap for Flash. But with... You know, three vessels here just consistently irradiating, keeping that pressure on, containing at both locations. He, oh, nice pickoff, though. He may just wear this down here. Yeah. I don't know if there's actually enough resources here for Hero to even have an army that can support this position. The vessels can keep on irradiating, irradiating and chiseling away here. And I think Flash is now pulling the trigger. And this, guy's may be the killing blow. Oh, he has a Nidus up. We need to see some units come through there right now. The Defiler will come out. So he will okay. hold on to this he location. He needs to consume those. He gets the Dark Swarm up. And no, he goes for a Plague. I'm a little oh, bit wow. surprised by this. OK. I, I, you know, I'm usually, OK with it, actually. Like, he had two Lurkers there. He had the potential for more links to come yeah. out. He needs to start gaining value. And I mean, what, what's his value here? It has to be playing base because Flash is not going to run into lurkers and just die. So if he starts getting some plagues down, if he can pick off those vessels, that's a big move, right? Like all the vessels are going to be at like one health here. So unless Flash brings them back and repairs, the vessel count can be picked off very quickly. So even though Hero seems to be lasting, um, Flash has him completely surrounded. Yeah. Now, Let's not forget what happened in game three. Hero lasted this long and then did the impossible. 
But I would say it's even harder to pull that off on this map specifically. Yeah, great, great plague again, though. And, and you, you, it is a, a fantastic plague. You're right about that. He's going to be able to clean up some stuff, too. Oh, my God. The mine <laughs> glitching out there for a moment. And uh, these are little victories. You know, if you get those plagues up, keep the defilers alive. It's really okay to lose Zerglings if you're killing anything. Yeah, it, it's cheap. It's such a cheap unit. You know what's tough for me is that Hero's about 30 supply below where he needs to be to truly fight against what Flash has. Very true. It, it's really tough. And the thing is, again, the fourth base, do you see a way to get a fourth base? Not, I'm not really. I, you look at that mini-map and you see mines everywhere. You, you see units everywhere. You see barracks floating, watching. Flash is expanding to their main. He has his third base up and fully operational. And to be honest, even the bottom center base is so far away yeah. in some senses. I mean, how do you even capture that? Well, uh, with a defiler, Tasteless. Uh, that's what his answer is. Let's see if he can actually get this. This is... Uh, absolutely necessary, but also super ambitious based on the position Hero's in. And Hero probably will not try to get a fifth base for a long time here. Yeah, well, with four bases, you can do everything you need to do for a very long time. Oh, no, mistimed right there. But look at the amount of siege tanks. This is becoming really difficult for him to hold on. Like, even with Darkstorm, you can't get down this ramp. All those mines, all those siege tanks, there's just not much you can do. Like, if he had um, Guardians, maybe, but we know he doesn't have that tech going on. He's now sending the Vultures in here. The third base is about to fall as the fourth base is being started. Actually, the fourth base, I think, is about to be shut down as well here. This base is just, it just, there's not enough to hold this. Flash is everywhere on this map right now. Hero having such there it a is. hard time. GG. Flash wins the ASL final season three. 3-1 three, versus Hero meaning this is his third ASL victory in a row. In a row. To win three Star Leagues in a row is just an unheard of <laughs> an unheard of feat. And you see Flash here pointing to his badges, showing you he gets that third. This guy, Chills, actual Nerd Chills, has nine major championships. That's three right. Three OSL, three MSL, three ASL. His legend continues to grow. In this ASL, where we did not have Jadon, we did not have Beastus in the final, we continue to have new, fresh blood and StarCraft remastered, new challengers coming, but they face the same results, the same defeat. Flash is the greatest Brood War player in the world. It's been proven once again. I mean it. He stands on the shoulders of so many Gosus, but so far above them as well. He, he, he's the best gamer of all time. You cannot not respect him. That's his father there, by the way. A more common face at the finals than even Misu. Um, <laughs> right? Yeah. No, I mean, it, it's, it's wild, man. The, the amount of respect you must show for the domination of Flash in such a difficult game. He's just, it's crazy. He's unstoppable. It's another moment that Flash is all too familiar with. He raises the trophy. Another tournament, he's asserted his dominance. We're gonna go to an interview now and see what he's feeling after he's won his third consecutive ASL. We know it's been a tough journey for you every time to become a champion, but you always manage to make it happen. Your opponent was tough enough tonight, though. I heard. Zerg was tough to face, and you put extra prep into this finals. How do you feel right now? I wanted to win so badly tonight. I just, I almost practiced to death, excuse me. I prepped harder for this than basically any other finals. I almost don't even know what to say. I'm just so happy right now. We know that you always play perfectly, 
But it's not just about your raw talent, it's about how much uh, hard work you put into StarCraft. To become a true god and one of the best, you don't need a number two, you just need a number one. I'm obsessed with being the best, or trying to be number one. I guess that it's just so important to me that I, I be the best. I feel like my life doesn't have meaning if I'm not competing. And to get these three back-to-back -back champions, which I desperately wanted to have, I really want to enjoy this moment with my family and as my fans as well. I'm going to continue to consistently show my uh, great performance to everybody who cheers for me. If you can keep playing like tonight, I think we can. We might have to expect in season four and season five you continue to dominate. Do you have anybody you want to thank? I know back in the day, I never was able to make those three back-to-back -back championships, but tonight, I'm really happy to, to make this happen. But this can only be possible for the people who watch me and root for me. I'm glad I was able to keep my word to you guys. Since I've got the triple crown with the ASL, I suppose I can try with a different race. Am I hearing this correctly? To become a champion. Am I hearing that correctly? No. A different race? Okay. I think he's trolling, dude. No way. Is he trolling? I don't know if that was for real or not, but well, that he, would be cool. Yeah. If he played Protoss, man, probably the game would be uninstalled on everyone's PC by now. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna go to the winner's ceremony. I'm curious to see if that was uh, if that was actually what he intends to do or if he's uh, just saying that, but that's very cool. Uh, we now have the CEO of Africa TV coming up. We are gonna give the prize to the runner-up, Hero, who, by the way, uh, props to Hero. He did a great job. Game three was no so shame, sick. No shame in losing to Flash. Yeah. And game three was something he'll never forget. He actually beat Flash in the longest game we had here. Yeah. And now Kevin, our CEO, is going to talk about talk to our audience. He's asking everybody in the studio, how do you guys feel about this performance tonight? First of all, Pete compliments for Flash. We really appreciate their great games. And of course, Hero, we couldn't have done it without him as well. Congratulations to him, too. So here we go. Now, coming up here, congratulations to Hero. That's roughly 20,000 US dollars. He gets the flowers, too. Now, remember, guys, when the, the champion gets it, he's got a trophy, he's got a big cardboard check. He's got the flowers. Now, Flash, watch carefully because he's been in enough finals. Oh, he's With only this. two arms, he'll somehow figure out how to hold up all three of these things. Dude, I can tell you what. Only Flash and parents know how to do this. You yeah. cradle the flowers. You That's cradle. That's right. While holding in your hand the trophy. With and the other check. hand underneath the check. Yes. I do look forward to seeing uh, Hero in more tournaments. I think he really is in great form. Yeah. It's going to be up to it, it gets someone like Flash to just not take any little blows early on so he can get a solid lead um, in that late game. Now we're going to go to the final prize here for our champion Flash. It's going to do another ASL artosis. I'm glad we have a sister tournament to the GSL. Um, we're having the KT business director our sponsor come out to give the big prize check to Flash. So, make some noise for him. And the crowd goes wild. 
Without sponsors like this, we would not have uh, tournaments like this. So we do appreciate them supporting StarCraft. I'm not sure if he's going to say any words. I think he's going to leave the words to Caster Park. Good call. He's good with those words. All right. We now are going to give it up for the ASL Season 3 2017 champion, Flash. And now the cool music and the confetti comes down. This is, what is the song? Is this Final? Not Final Destination. I'm not sure. This is a great song to play StarCraft 2. It's actually Flash plays this uh, song a lot when he streams. A lot of other players like this. Okay, now he's got the flowers. You guys watch it. Look at that. He's cradling the flag. double cradle. Now here he goes. He and knows that older trophy. trophy because he's been in enough finals. Oh, he's gotten golden trophies before. That's right. And the golden pin. Oh, hold on. There's a golden pin. Can he do it? He's multitasking. He's on point even during the awards. Tony. True. Star F1 champion. Take no damage from the pin. <laughs> Very important. Yeah. He could have lost one HP there. Yeah. No damage that. toward the pin. Oh, he got spice. the golden ruler. A now, golden ASL ruler uh -oh. flash. So, if you guys didn't know, he actually measures the distance from his mouse's keyboard, his monitor, his hair, and has that purpley. So, he's going to have the golden ruler. It's going to be the only one that we ever make. That's right. It's just for Flash, a special gift for him here. This I, guy. I only wish Flash could watch me play, be disappointed in my StarCraft abilities, and then hit my knuckles with that ruler. Oh, that would be amazing. That would be just the dream. I would love that so much. I hope he brings that ruler now and measures everything. Yeah. But knowing Flash, he'll bring the same ruler because he's sure of its measurements. That's that he's right. always used, of course. Another sick night of StarCraft. This was actually a fairly short night, I think. How long were we on here? It's uh, 7.25 right now. Two and a half hours, man. And, um, Not too bad. Yeah. We've had some more one-sided matches here, so uh, I'm glad that we actually had a great game there um, with Hero. Yeah. That was with well, Game 3. That was a Hero, lot of fun. Hero put up a lot of great fights, to be honest. And it, the thing is, Hero was playing very, very well. It's just when Flash really brings it, oh, my God. Like, yeah. his flanks on the armies that Hero was making to defend the top left, Top, he holds against every other Terran on Earth. I'm not even joking. This isn't hyperbole. Hero will hold that against everybody else. Only Flash will break something like that. So, so well deserved to Flash to see this beautiful play tonight. That's going to do it for us. Congratulations to Flash. We love you guys. We'll be back next year with more ASL. And, of course, be sure to join us at the GSL Codas. Again, we love you. Have a good morning, afternoon, or night, wherever you are.
누구도 못했던 333 달성할 수 있도록 하겠습니다. 